But basically how this is gonna go is I'm just gonna kind of go briefly over the history of GOT7, kind of go over like some of the amazing accom uh, accomplishments that they have made in their career because a lot of people don't think that they've accomplished anything within their career. Whereas what I like to think they changed the K-pop industry. So, you know, everyone has their own opinion, right? And then after my little spiel about their history, I mean, y'all can always chime in and put comments in like, oh, they also did this, like if I forget something. And then at the end, let I just want to like have all of us like kind of like talk about our biases or like you know talk about like how you found got seven stuff like that also um for those of you who don't know me hi my name is robin i am obviously the leader of this um and i am a youtuber but i put that term very lightly because at this point i only do got seven stuff on my youtube channel and then <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to say i'm a k-pop youtuber but i only do got seven um and then also i'm a twitch streamer um Though I literally only play one game, and that's it. So, I like to say I'm a variety streamer. I play one game. Yeah, it's funny. Um, so, I'm actually going to be recording this because this will be going onto the YouTube channel because I have a lot of people that are like, I want to see this. And I'm like, really? <laughs> so, shouldn't take me forever to talk about my boys? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you say that now, but... <laughs> <laughs> you get me going, I could talk about them all day, like, you know? And welcome to my TED Talk about right, uh, God exactly. <laughs> We will start today. Welcome In the to beginning, my TED there Talk. there was JYP. And, uh, yeah, he did some things, whatever. Let's move <laughs> forward. <laughs> Girl, I'm gonna get all into that, too, because I look at prices, I look at stocks. Jay, you know what? Mm. JYP fumbled, like when I saw the announcement, I was like, you just fumbled a whole bag. Like True. I've seen people drop the bag. I've seen K-pop companies drop a bag or like, oh, they let this person get away and they let this person get away. Mm -hmm. But for you to do it with seven, mm -hmm. like seven superstars, you dropped a entire suitcase my dude yeah like are you at home like punching the air right now no he he don't care because he has twice now he knows that twice mm. is his money maker right now mm. Mm. that's why he don't care like okay <laughs> just just talking about sorry. that man just because i've hated him ever since he started treating 2 p.m badly and yep. 2 a.m mm -hmm. yeah i've hated him since then and so mm -hmm. when god 7 debuted i was like they're fucking next i knew immediately I day six is going through it right now like day six ain't okay. resigning no way and so this should have been this should have this should have been everybody's clue is that he is friends with yg like mm -hmm. birds of a feather flock together, and YG. I'm sorry, I'm yelling. I, I got I about YG. Like, the way you feel about JYP is how I feel about YG. Like mm -hmm. I bet not ever go to Korea and catch this dude on the street because <laughs> I'm saying. You better hope I'm nowhere near that fucking company while JYP is there. Man, <laughs> child, JYP ain't shit. <laughs> it ain't never be it. <laughs> Bro, and like the thing, I think the funniest thing is that he always tries to like randomly come back and mm -hmm. be like, I'm here. Like, you know, that collab that he did with Rain? I'm like, go away. No one asked for you. We can have Rain. He's fine as fuck. You, you, uh, not so much. I'm not, I'm not a regular CEO. I'm a cool CEO. <laughs> like, cool my ass. <laughs> He's fucking creepy as hell, that man. No, ma'am. <laughs> That's what he tries to put out there. Is it? So I'm gonna ask you a question, and then okay. we can we can go do your thing. So when you see new K-pop stands coming to like the the you know the multi sphere that is our fandom, do you do you burst that bubble when they're like JYP company is so cool? Do you like oh, you know let them find out for themselves because they're not gonna believe us, or do you just like let me pop this bubble real quick? It depends on the person for me. So I typically ask. You know, because I don't want to, like, if they think it's, like, gumdrops and roses, like, sure, let them believe that and let them do their own research, you know? But it's, like, I always ask, do you want me to tell you the reason why they left JYP? Because I, I go full in depth, which you're about to see. And so it honestly depends, because I always ask first. Um, but then again, I haven't met a new Agase since 2019. <laughs> So it's it's kind of yeah because 
I'm very old fashioned. Like I'm like old fashioned K-pop. Like even before Twitter. Like I I hardly ever use social media, which is crazy to think about that I am a Gen Z and millennial and I don't use social media. Let's go ahead and get started about the seven men. The reason why we're here. Okay, so J. Ugh, just saying his name irks me. So back in 2010. Jin Young and JB had done a dance competition or dance audition into JYP. Um, and they both tied for first place, which made them both trainees. And so two years later, they ended up debuting with JJ Project. And we all know the signature bounce. Like, you know, we all know the signature bounce, right? And so they also did a drama like when a man, no, when a man falls in love, something like that. Yeah. When a man falls in love. I was right memory it works um so they were on that shortly after they had debuted and then um they just went on hiatus like we never heard from jj project again until about a year later ish in 2013 um uh, mark jackson bam and yugim were part of uh when who was next which was jyp trainees and yt trainees going against each other to see who was like kind of more ready to debut in a sense so you had like Got Seven, trash show, true. Um, you had like members of Got Seven, you had members of Day Six in there, you had members of, I believe, Icon in there and Winner. And so it, I honestly didn't watch it because at that point I was still in my phase of Teen Top Infinite Shiny. So I was like, okay, cool. Um, and then a year later, cause then all of a sudden, no, no nothing of them, nothing of Meritai Kong plus yu gi -Oh. So, we went a year and then all of a sudden JYP is like, we're debuting a new boy group in January of 2014. If at the time, a huge JYG trash, but I reformed that. <laughs> I love that. So uh, in 2014, GOT7 had debuted uh, with girls, 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 they love me. Um, I hated that song for so long. <laughs> I hated it so much. I love Follow Me, that a lot. Fa well, that's my favorite song off that album. The rest of the album I can't listen to because it makes me cringe. Um, but they had debuted. And when they debuted, actually, if you look at JYP stocks, he almost went bankrupt before he fucking debuted GOT7. And so, in a sense, with GOT7's debut, saved them from bankruptcy because so many people were so interested in about this, this boy group that does martial arts and, you know, doing flips all over the stage, which scared the shit out of me. Um, and having three international members, like, at that time, it was it wasn't unheard of in K-pop, but it was def different. And so, J Got Seven saved JYP from bankruptcy. You're welcome. I'm I'm not gonna fucking sugarcoat it. They did. Um, a few months later, they would release A the overalls. <sighs> Jin Young Spock haircut. Ugh. Okay, so um, they debuted with A. Um, every MV up until Hachajima had a member of Twice in it um, before debut. Uh, so A had Sana, which I was like, oh my god, that's my girl Sana. <laughs> they debuted with A, nothing really other than that. And then Hachajima come out, came out or Stop Stop It. Okay. <laughs> That was when I was like, please just leave their hair alone, bro. Like, come on, give me a break, you know? Um, and Loki Got7 was the reason why JYP was able. <laughs> I actually. <laughs> She's like, oh my God. <laughs> I just wanted to hear something Got7 for a second. <laughs> so um, Got7 was able to help fund. Um, JYP and able to make the Survivor show 16 for twice. If it wasn't for GOT7, JYP would not be around today. So I look at stocks, honey. I do facts. So um, in 2015, GOT7 was awarded with a new artist award at the 29th Golden Disc Awards, which was very impactful for them because they were a new, they were new rookies, and then you had JJ Project a part of them. And it was like like just it was like the start for them. And then they also, I don't know if any of y'all have watched Dream Night, <laughs> but that had also won Best Drama Award, Best Director Award, and Rising Star Award at the K-Web Fest in July of 2015, which when I found that out, I was like, 
why? Because <laughs> obviously now looking back on it, ew. <laughs> but okay. So then in May of 2015, GOT7 uh, did their first ever US fan meet, which was a year after they debuted. So at that time in K-pop, it was weird to have a newly fresh started artist a year after their debut come to the States, right? It was re really different. And so JYP kind of took a gamble, but he kind of had a, like, I guess he knew that GOT7 had a bigger international fan base than he did in, than they did in Korea. And so they ended up going to San Francisco, Chicago, and Dallas. I actually went to the Dallas show. That was my first ever concert. Um, got to meet the boys as well. Uh, can tell you more about that if you want to hear it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they ended up going. They ended up almost selling out all three shows, which was, once again, at the time, unheard of. Like, no K-pop idol at the time, no K-pop group at the time were able to, a year after debut, go and almost sell out three shows in the states like that was uncalled for um and then not too long after that they uh dropped uh you know their first ever like japanese single love train as well as the icon that is just right which i know so many people getting into got seven because of just right um that is their number one top uh viewed music video to this day i think it has like 300 million views if not more i can't remember exactly the moment or the number but that's whenever they started kind of getting bigger was because of Just Right. And then they would eventually embark on going to KCON in uh, 2015. Uh, which I think Jackson was the one that missed that one. Which is big sad. But this was like showing that at least GOT7 in the States, they are very wanted. Which is great because they came here every year after that. So uh, then they had Laugh Laugh Laugh. And then we have the beauty that is Niga Hamyun, or if you do, along with a repackage of a uh, Gobek song, confession song, blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's just, let's just get into my favorite part about Gossip is the discography, the Flight Luck series. <laughs> Flight Luck series, you got Fly, Hello, and it. this is where, like, you see GOT7 kind of put a lot of more effort into their story and background into, like, three different albums, three different comebacks. So you had Fly, you had Hard Carry, which Korea only knows Hard Carry when it comes to GOT7. And then you have Never Ever. Uh, there's so many uh, like different theories about what's going on, especially with Jin Young, because Jin Young was kind of like the main person of that whole series. It's just really good. Ashley actually has a few videos talking about it. I actually edited them. Um, if you guys want to go check it out on her YouTube channel, um, she just really gets into it. And I'm like yes so doo -doo 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 -doo. um and then also in that same year of them doing the flight log once uh never ever ended jj project had their long way to come back after five years with neo owner or tomorrow today and they performed at a kcon 2017 la which that was my first kcon going to see got seven and them having jj project i will always remember me going to barbecue with ashley before kcon and i was like jj project is performing at kcon and she was like no they're not they did. And that, you, you bet your ass after the concert. I was like, I told you so. So, yeah. Um, and later after KCON, that's when Jackson created Team Wang, his label. Um, and that's whenever he started releasing songs under Team Wang. Um, then you have Seven for Seven. Um, this is what I like to call Crackhead yu gi -Oh era. Because that's whenever he had his yellow hair. And we all know as a true Agase, yellow hair yu gi -Oh was scary. Um, he was all over the place. So that's why I like to call Crackhead yu gi -Oh. Uh, that was also the first ever song JB has written for the boys that was actually promoted as the like title track. And I think he won a few music awards for that, which is dope. Cause you know, it being your first song that you produced for the group and you winning, it's like a big fuck you to JRB. And then um, later that year, GOT7 was nominated for the popularity award at Asia Artist Music Awards, nominated for Dis Dis on at the Golden Disc Awards and won best world performer and favorite K-pop star, the uh, Mama Awards, which is dope as hell because at this point it's GOT7 basically just getting their name out there. Um, in 2018, they dropped my favorite comeback, Look. I loved Look. It was amazing, beautiful, amazing. And then as a thank you to the fans, Jin Young, the love of my life, 
he dropped Kamawo, which is a thank you to the fans, uh, written for the fans. And I'm like, ha, oh. <laughs> that is my all time favorite song. Kamawo, I love thee. Look, won many awards. Um, it was also like on the top, on top of the iTunes charts. Devil man. <laughs> it was on top of the iTunes charts for a long time. Um, it won, like it debuted on Billboard, the album itself debuted on Billboard's World the Album Star at number two, which is unheard of for GOT7 at that point. And, you know, they were certified platinum by Guy on Chart and the Korean Music Content Association, which is just amazing. We got their Eyes on You tour that they kicked off, their world tour. Uh, they stopped in Houston, where I currently reside now. Crazy amount how that's for a circle. Um... They did their tour. I went, I had Barricade, had a stupid, crazy experience that I wish everyone could have, but also at the same time not because I know my reaction was funny <laughs> and I know they were laughing at my ass. Present You with Lullaby, my second favorite comeback of theirs. Very colorful, very bright, very fun. Another song written by JB. Um, along with Look, uh, uh, GOT7, uh, while promoting Lullaby, they were able to be the third group to ever hold a comeback on the M uh, like at, on Mnet as an Mnet TV show, um, which was got the GOT7 comeback show, which was very interesting. Bam Bam Killed Me in King. Jin Young Killed Me in King. I was like, this man, this motherfucker rapping. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then later they uh, go out and release Present You and Me, which had Miracle, sad ass song um and have all the stages that they did from the past two concerts which is great because i missed higher um and then got seven in 2018 would go on to win uh artist of the year and best popular award at the asia artist awards and also be able to win a uh, worldwide fans choice top 10 and tiktok most popular artists at the mama awards then we get into the year where the major mistreatment happens 2019 Ugh. So, GOT7 would go on to release one of their last J uh, Japanese tracks, I Won't Let You Go, favorite Japanese track right there. Um, and J for those of you who don't know, GOT7 is very, very popular in Japan. JRP just didn't play to the market, which is stupid. Um, that was also the year where Jin Young really kind of told everyone, 2019 is a garbage year. Um, that was also the year where Jin Young really said, I want to act in more drama. So, that was the year that he was a part of Sakumin 3 Kunyasok or he is psychometric. Highly suggest people go watch that if you have it. It's really good. Um, and this is also when Just Two debuted with uh, Focus On Me, which I thought was interesting for it to be J Bomb and Yu Gyum. And then they said that Yu Gyum would be the leader of that. I, I just think it's funny. May of 2019, they had a spinning top between security and insecurity with Eclipse. Um, they debuted on Billboard World's albums at number five. Uh, with that album, they also kicked off their North America tour for Keep Spinning. And they went on to the, was it the Today Show or Good Morning America? I don't remember. I think it was Today Show. But yeah, they went on to what happened with Yugi though. Oh, nothing. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting that just two was JB and yu gi -Oh. uh, But GOT7 appeared on the Today Show to kind of promote their tour. And they draw they sang an english version of the album which i would love to hear and have it on an album please got seven please jyp at this point didn't even promote the comeback and not really promote the tour either and so it was just annoying at that point because we were like okay we can kind of see the mistreatment going on um and then poor young jay still had to deal with saucings because if you guys don't know the young jay saucing problem young jay has saucing constantly like following him and calling him and just annoying the shit out of him i felt bad for young jay at that time and then let's see we have he sure didn't it was that dumb stuff on that mm -hmm. um they would go on to oh jackson would go on to be a part of uh what's it called <sighs> head in the clouds um yeah, so a few songs, Sticky the Sunrise, Walking, I Love You 3000, part two. Um, he was the first ever Chinese artist on these types of songs. 88 Rising, that's what it's called. Um, and then also he dropped his first ever solo album, Mirrors. Then Call My Name, he got Niga Bururu Nai Irem, which Gossip became the first JYP entertainment company. First, er, Gossip became the first uh, 
group from JYP to sell over a thousand uh, or a hundred thousand copies of the album the first day, um, which was kind of a fuck you to all the ones to saying, God, Seven didn't do anything twice as someone that's holding JYP up. Girl, look at stocks. And then that later that year, they won the grand prize death song at the fourth Asia Artist Awards for performance of the year. Their first ever death song, which is like a huge thing. You see BTS winning death song after death song after death song. But it's just for GOT7, their first death song. I remember crying. Yes, people say that. People say that. And it's annoying. <laughs> um, and then let's see. 2020. The year we all love the most. Mark would go out and drop his first ever solo song, Out of My Head. Um, Jackson would go back to being busy in China. Um, in April 2020, you know, COVID hit before then. Um, and so they still had a comeback with Die, Not By The Moon, uh, which sold over 160,000 copies of their EP, uh, of their album the first day. It was one of the most uh, highest selling albums of GOT7 to date. Um, loved that album. Aura. Don't do this thing with Aura, but... This is whenever um, August has really made it a petition to make sure that they see the mistreatment that got uh, that JYP was doing with got seven and so they did a truck they did so many live reports about it and JYP being the asshole he is made sure to pay the people that were reporting about it pay the people off so it was off of the internet so even the boys didn't know about it until they actually saw the truck which I remember I think it was young Jay saw the truck took a picture and send it and that's whenever everyone found out that JYP is paying people off to take it off the internet because they didn't want, he didn't want his company to look bad. Bitch, it's already bad. <laughs> like, the fuck you on about? And so, because a lot of people were asking the boys it, on V Life, have you seen the truck? Which was like a huge thing. Like, I even donated to be a part of it. So, um, it was crazy because international fans could see all the, like, news outlets, but not in Korea. We did need a truck to tell me you were trash. <laughs> oh fuck, that's funny. <laughs> so um, in 2020, that's whenever Jin Young uh, got the part in The Devil's Judge, which they had a screening watch party for earlier today. Definitely very amazing. Um, and then also uh, Jackson had released Pretty Please at that point. Um, JB would go on to do his own stuff, and then we have the last album that got seven released under JYP. Breath of Love, last piece, not gonna lie, kind of a lackluster album, but I mean, with JYP breathing down their backs, I'm happy they at least released something. Let's see, it peaked really high because a lot of people knew that this would be the last time Got Seven would be doing a song or album under JYP. Uh, they were going on to do award shows, and I can't remember exactly which award show it was. It was I think it was a Golden Disc Award. They went to go accept one of their death songs, um, and they literally went out skipping because they knew it was the end. And even Agassiz at that point knew it was the end of an era of JYP and GOT7. So then 2021 comes around, J GOT7 released JYP. We're freaking out. We're like, yeah! So everyone goes to their own separate companies. You got Jin Young going into an acting agency, which I was like, okay, okay. You got Jackson doing his own thing in China, but he's still like partnered with uh, Bam Bam's agency. And then you got Bam Bam uh, at the same agency as Sunmi. You got Young Jay at Sublime, I believe. Um, you got Young Jay at his own uh, at the agency, and then you got. JB and Yukim at one of J Park's, like, you know, or two of J Park's agencies higher and AOMG. Um, and then you have Mark just randomly coming back to Cali. <laughs> and I was like, what you gonna do? I'm on a live stream. Motherfucker streamed, I think, six times. After leaving JYP, got, uh, Jin Young said that he felt as though he wanted to release something for the fans to, like, show. We're still together. And so they released Encore, which was written by Jin Young. <sighs> We don't talk about Encore, it makes me cry. Um, and then you, let's see, ugh, now I gotta go based off memory because my notes are done. Um, so let's see, you got Mark releasing his own music. You got Bam Bam who debuted first and then you got Yugi following up not too long too, after it with, uh, you know, Ribbon and uh, Timosia, my fault. 
my mistake something like that i can't remember the english title and then you got jb releasing his own stuff not under not just only under jb but also his persona of a producer deaf soul favorite album right there the deaf soul album it's all your fault that's what it's called in english <laughs> um and then you have jin young going on to do more acting um he's like all over the place now and then just randomly drops a song in the middle of fucking august or july and i'm like oh yeah you are a singer huh you got jackson doing his own thing all of them are doing their own thing and then it comes around to 2022 where pretty early on i was like got seven's making a comeback this year and it's gonna be in may I was way too right about that. They came back in May with Na Na Na. It was a cutesy, like, it was like, got, it was like Got7 showing themselves what they could have been if they were in JYP, if JYP actually gave them attention. And it's beautiful and amazing. And I love that album. And I literally have every single album, <laughs> every member, because uh, I'm crazy. And then now you have. Young J dropping Sugar, which my albums are actually coming in today. That's kind of crazy. Um, and now you have uh, Jin Young preparing for his solo album to release. And then I think, who is it? Yu Gam is preparing for his next album. And that's where we are today. Blow was amazing. It took me a long time to like Blow, actually. Which album would you recommend for someone interested in their music? Personally, my favorite album is Eyes on You, but I feel like if someone wants to like get a taste of GOT7, I would say Turbulence, because it gives it gives them all of the aspects that is GOT7. You got Soft Sweet, you got Hard Carry, and then you got like those kind of like mids, where it's like, you know, Dreamin' and uh, what is it, Mayday? So I think Turbulence. My favorite album is Eyes on You, though. And I'm surprised. Thank you for doing all of that. I have to get... Into God's seven, my journey begins. Yes, there. If I could share the screen, I would definitely show y'all my favorite music video. <laughs> now let's get to talking. Y'all can unmute yourselves if you want, or just talk in chat if you want. Um, and we can get to just talk. What's your favorite MV? Oh, my favorite MV is between Look and Lullaby. And it's not even because they're pretty, it's just because of the editing aspect. I'm a video editor, and so I love the video a editing aspects of everything. So, that is why I got here late. So, who is your bias and why? <laughs> My bias is Jin Young! <laughs> My bias is Jin Young. Um, the reason why is because he picked me. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, because I feel like out of... I mean, obviously, GOT7 is a unique group because... Devil Man. <laughs> Please, let me live. Um, no, but um, the reason why is because... Um, obviously, all of GOT7, they show their true colors, right? But I feel like Jin Young was the one that was very late to showing his true colors, you know? He was kind of hidden. And, you know, once you really get to know Jin Young, he's such a sweet, caring guy... Not to mention fine as fuck. Um, but, you know, he's so sweet and caring and just, just, like, we also have very similar personalities and I typically gravitate towards biasing people that have similar personalities to me. Yes, Lottie, fine. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, Jackson's my bias, Bam Bam Wrecker, but Jin Young is coming for me, especially with this last comeback him in those glasses and sweaters and that mv did y'all know that got that jin young in the na 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 mv he's wearing a wig did y'all know that <laughs> another reason why we hate jyp he let shonyu go yep true what yeah jin young is wearing a wig because he cut all of his hair out for his movie that he will be releasing later this year i love knowing that <laughs> okay i have another question i so Obviously, we know Jin Young is the actor, but like we obviously know other members have done acting, like mm -hmm. Young Jay. So, do you think like Young Jay did some dramas in 2021? They were like mostly like web drama stuff. But do you think anybody else will go the acting route? Like, um, honestly, with Young Jay's drama, it was a surprise when I heard about it. I was like, especially Chinese drama. 
because like you know how lay is now doing dramas yeah i know whatever i don't know if i would ever picture jackson in a drama especially chinese drama but do you think anybody else will take the acting route other than we obviously know young jay has done acting but um i i can't envision it because none of them have actively said that you know they want to pursue acting like Jin Young has. I mean, mm. maybe mm. maybe a cameo, sure. But, like, I remember when they released that, or, like, announced that Young Jae was going to be a part of the drama. I was like, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> Young Jae, by the way, that fucking drama was so cringe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, like, I was like, what? <laughs> but I, 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 I don't think so. I mean, maybe. Maybe. But I feel like jb jb's too cool for that at that point and then you you give you always mentioned that he hates acting like he hated doing dream night <laughs> mm-hmm. so i don't i don't envision it mark i don't know mark made random cameos in dream night 2 or not dream night 2 dream uh dream high 2 and i was like is that mark <laughs> so <laughs> who knows you Call My Name is my favorite Jackson single. Jackson is a big variety show person. He is variety. So I, I definitely, he'd probably be doing that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Devil Man. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, you Call My Name is my favorite single. Which one is mine? My favorite single is Look. I love Look. Jackson was my bias. All eyes on me concert. Bam, bam, snatched my damn soul during King. During Spinning Top, Jin Young came for me. <laughs> Yo, GOT7, they are, like, if you haven't seen GOT7 live, which I'm very sorry if you haven't, and hopefully one day you'll be able to, they, they're crazy, and they're evil. (laughs) They're crazy and evil. They are crazy and evil, because you never know what to expect. You can kind of guess, but you never fully know. And so, they're, they're scary. Like, I have a question. Oh. All right, go for it. All right. So, what is your favorite, like, non music moment from all seven of them? Like, is it like them being pushing each other off the train? Or, <laughs> um, or I can, Jackie I can, telling that, I can name Jackie one for each member. Reporter. I can, okay. so oh. for JB, it would definitely be, I mean, I love when the members pick on JB. <laughs> Like, I just, I don't know. Like, the moment you, like, said the train thing, my fucking instant was thinking about on how Jin Young was planning to set up JB and push him out. <laughs> and leave him and have Bam Bam and Jin Young, co- or Bam Bam and Jackson come back in and they were going to leave Jin Young, or JB. I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> for Mark, whenever he cusses, because it's so funny when he cusses now, because he'll cuss and then, like, and then he'll say it again. Just be like, I'm not a JYP. I can say whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> um, for Jackson. Ah, oh, fuck. Jackson's just so entertaining to watch in general. Like, it doesn't matter what the man does. I'm thoroughly entertained. Jin Young. I will kill you, Gyo. <laughs> uh, Young Jae. Young Jae, my favorite thing he's ever said or done is doing real got seven i believe and he was like it's not hard it's not hard i'm like no <laughs> please bam bam how do you know it's not big okay and that was iconic um and then yu gyum yu gyum just crackhead yu gyum during eyes on eyes on no 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 not eyes on you seven for seven air crackhead but just them all together picking on each other because they're so savage with each other, right? Oh, the JB Chen. I just remembered about the JB Chen when he's mad. <sighs> so I just, I just love all seven of them because they, they're literally savage with each other, and then the fans are savage to them and roast them, and so they roast the fans back. I think that that's such a very unique, like, bonded, like not bondage, but like you know, bond between the fans. How many times have you seen Got Seven? Three, four times. Four times. Four times seen four times 2015 when they went to dallas kcon 2017 eyes on you 2018 and keep spinning 2019 i know i'm very lucky i also saw him at the airport and <laughs> they all looked at me like 
Because I have this thing with Jin, Jin Young knows who I am. They all do, but Jin Young knows specifically who I am. So anytime Jin Young looks at me, he does this thing. He does one of two things. He's either like, oh my god, it's you. And like, you know, it's like really nice. Or he'll just like look at me and be the typical Jin Young he is of like judging. And just like look at me and then walk away. <laughs> I'm like, you are an ass. Why do I love you? But yeah. Um, I do have another question though. Okay. Okay, so... So, Jack, Lay, like, I can't come to Korea because of reasons. And then Jackson's just going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you think that is that Jackson's able to, like, ping pong and do whatever he wants to do? Um, let's just say... He's from Hong Kong. Well, like, that and also Lay's in a more of a predicament than Jackson will mm. ever be. Lay is like the ambassador of the government party in China. Whereas Jackson's from Hong Kong, so yeah. he he does do a lot of promotion in China and everything, but like he kind of has a freedom of not being associated with the government or even from that country overall because he's from Hong Kong. Oh, I did not know that. Plus, if you also look at it this way, SM really is trying to get rid of Lei. <laughs> Yes. That's <laughs> SM's like, that we want too. nothing to do with him. And I'm like, that's he's still a part of that point, The EXO fans are the same thing. Like, they, they're they like Agassiz, where they're like, Lei will love you no matter if you're in EXO or not. <laughs> so he is he is still a member. Thank you. He is. Of Please course. Hold out yes. <laughs> of course. Um, but I did not know that. Thank you for that information. PS mm. SM Entertainment is trash, too. I think yeah. any big entertainment company in Korea is trash. Yeah, the big three are not sending them, making Hell, them bits. There are small ones that are trash, too. Like, look at Top Media. Yeah. Look at Cube. Mm. Cube. Cube, Cube is more known than Top Media, though. Yeah, uh, That's true. But or TST I... Entertainment. Ooh. Don't even get me started on that right? one. <laughs> Whoa. We trying to keep we trying to keep positive vibes here. Positive vibes. <laughs> Good vibes only. <laughs> Bro. Jackson TV, Jin Young TV, Bam Bam. Bam Bam. When Bam Bam was with Yu Gi that's when it gets scary. <laughs> she was surprised on Bam Bam's debut. Oh, as a solo artist. I Everyone think was. I didn't think he would go that route. Everyone was surprised. Everyone was surprised. We all thought Bam Bam was going to do something sexy. He comes out doing something cute. We were like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> I will always remember that. Like, who the fuck oh, are no, you? <laughs> like, Honestly, yeah, I was surprised by um, both of the debuts under Jay Parks, too. Because I wasn't expecting... I guess sexy from either one of them. I wasn't expecting cute either from them, but I didn't really know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that. I could tell with JUBs, I was like, yeah. Except the only thing, the only bone I have to pick with JBs is like, God damn it, how many featurings are you gonna have on that album? <laughs> I wanna hear you. I don't wanna hear J Park in the middle of your fucking title track doing his like, I never I, wanna hear I never wanna hear J Park. Thank like, you. I never wanna hear him. Like, I, mean, I do not want to hear Jay Park. Like, I think the only collab off of his album that I really liked was the one he did with Wee In. Uh -huh. Like, I was like, I want to hear you. I want to hear you. I do not want to hear all these featurings, bro. That's why I was kind of happy whenever he dropped the his producer album for Def Soul. Because we got to hear him. And I was like, thank fucking God. Yugim, though. Yugim was a stretch. I didn't know what Yugim was going to do. Mm. I'm not surprised he went in that direction though, because you know Yugim's under AOMG. That's kind of what AOMG does. Like I was like, okay, whatever, you know. It's like the only comeback that really surprised the shit out of me was Bam Bam's, because mm. even Young Jason didn't surprise me. The one that he did this time, like his comeback, that surprised me. I was two with Bammy, but it was. I'm really curious if he's gonna ever do a like a darker, sexy concept as a soloist. Do they have any variety shows that you'd recommend to get to know them better? Hard Carry, Got Seven Hard Carry, season one and season two point five. <laughs> <laughs> 
Season 2.5 is a funny one, though. Because that's whenever they're all, like, trying to, like, chase each other through fucking Korea. And then uh, they're trying to get Young Jae, the fucking rat. Um, <laughs> just 2.5 is great and beautiful. It was so funny. Yes. Um, let's see. Now, if you were to ask me what I want Jin Young to do for his solo debut. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Be the devil. He already is. He can't stop that. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I'm on something different from Jin Young. Especially since right now I'm watching his newest, like the newest season of his drama, Yumi Cell season two. That drama damn near pisses me the fuck off. Um, I want him to do something like, like very just manly. Cause you know, in this drama, he's the one that can... The perfect handsome boyfriend. And I'm like, I want manly Jin Young. I want him to break some hearts. <laughs> like, no, we don't. <laughs> like, what kind of masochist are you? I'm like, I just, why? I mean, if that's your thing, that's your thing. But still, why? I just, I'm, I'm so, this drama that he's in pisses me off. Because, like, the first season, it went into the actor's, like, you know, po point of view pretty often. This season, done, don't, don't do it at all for him. And I'm like, there's no character development. There's none. <laughs> I'm bored. Isn't there supposed to be a season three? I think there's supposed to be a season three of Yumi Cells. There is. I hope he ain't in it. <laughs> the only reason <laughs> why I'm watching it is because he is in it. Right. He has another drama. I think he just, it was announced that he just got another drama, too. I got a bounce ball. See you later. I think for joining Janine. Uh, from what people said, the webtoon didn't go into his character's point of view. Uh, bro, like. Hold on. Wait. We already got seven. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> there isn't a season three scheduled. It's just, there's no character development, and so I'm bored. Mm. Because, like, you know, like, with Devil's Judge, you saw so much character development. And mm -hmm. th I think that's why it's my favorite drama. is because there's so much character development. And plus, the story's just really fucked up. Yumi so Like, I'm ready for his movie to drop. I know it's not dropping until, like, around Christmas, but I want it to drop now. Just so I can just not worry about this fucking drama anymore. Like, I have already watched... So, he has another movie on Netflix called... It is... Yaksha in Korean, but it's per it's literally spelled Yaksa on fucking Netflix. He he's just like a like he's like a side character. It's a really good movie. It's just ugh. sorry. I have to see that. I have still have to see that movie. It's pretty good. It's it's, it's that movie is also kind of fucked up. I might buy Jin Young too because I, I had the problem it. of I watched his psychometric. Uh, and I like Jin Young a lot. I really did. But I had the problem of falling in love with Kim Kwan, the brother. So then the ending of that, like, literally tore me apart because I hated it after that. Uh, you see, the um, thing is, is I was suspicious about the brother the whole time. <laughs> and so right. I knew immediately. I was like, the yeah. moment they dropped the hint, I was like. Yeah, I mean, looking back in hindsight, it was like very obvious, but I just, I hated that drama for what they did for my favorite character mm -hmm. because I love Kim Kwan in general, so. Yeah. My fellow, uh, watched Devil's Judge this morning and fell in love immediately. It's okay, you know, they always say, you don't pick the bias, the bias picks you. Pretty much. Because Jin Young picked me, bitch. And I mean, like, hand picked me from fucking 2015, bro. I was like, I like Mark Jin Young. No, the fuck you don't. You like me. Me. Okay, I like you. <laughs> I'm intimidated by that man. Which, Lord pray for me if I ever meet him again. Because, Lord, he, he either going to do one or two things. He's going to look me up and down and be like, you again. And or he's going to be like, oh my god, it's you again. Hi, Robin. Me. Please, no. <laughs> I don't ever want to see you ever again. But I do at the same time because you're so fucking beautiful. Yeah, any other last questions, comments, concerns? Da, 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 da. Right, that what happened with Banner. I'd like Jackson. to ask something. Okay, go for it. Um, so, sorry, I was the person in the chat who said that they stepped out and came back in. Yeah. So, just in case you already answered it, sorry about that. Have you seen them in concert? And if so, how was your experience? Like, being with other fans, seeing them live? Yeah, so I've seen them four times. 
in concert. Um, the fans, I can definitely tell they've gotten crazier as the years go on. Um, you know, because I saw them when they first started. And then going to Keep Spinning, which was their last tour in America. Um, and them selling out, I cried. Like, I literally cried because they got so big. You know, they went from a little small venue in Dallas to selling out a whole American Airlines Center in Dallas. And so I, like, cried. Um, the fans have definitely gotten crazier. But so have the boys. <laughs> They've definitely gotten crazy. Um, for those of you who don't know, God 7 actually does know me because of my YouTube channel. I do reactions oh, to their... nice. Yeah, I do reactions to their music videos. And so they watch... And when I tell you they watch, they fucking watch. Like, I'm not kidding. They watch. Like, Jackson Jackson watches me. I swear to God, that man is subscribed to my YouTube channel with how much he watches my stuff. And he'll post about it on Instagram. I'm like, please, no. No. But, yeah, so they they have different interactions with me versus everyone else. You know, because they have cute interactions with me. Whereas with me, they like to mess with me. And they know I mess with them back. So it's like, it's I. It's like, it's a mutual agreement. Um, mm -hmm. So... In 2018, or no, in 2017, when I saw him at KCON, Mark had noticed me and went to go get Jinya because they all know my bias is Jinya, and like pointed at me, and Jinya was like, <laughs> literally just the head cock. Um, and then in 2018, when they came to Houston, I had Barricade. Uh, they all like were really cute with me, and then Jackson realized that Jinya never ever saw me. And so at the end, I think this is also primarily the reason why Look is my favorite song because they did a reinversion of Look during that concert. And Jackson went to go get Jinyo and brought Jinyo over to me. And Jinyo was like, oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Aww. And then in 2019, um, they, <laughs> Jinyo saw me doing Sign and like kind of was like, like literally did like, a quadruple like what and then during save me jackson saw me and it was really funny because the way jackson saw me i'm pretty tall so like you know obviously like i stand out but you know what really stands out the most is if a tall person is like this looking through arms and so he saw me looking through someone's arm like this at him and he was like the fuck is she doing <laughs> i'm like hi and he's like hi so yeah they're really goofy they're they're mm -hmm. stupid goofy i threw a squirrel and a groot on stage for keep spinning and Jin Young saw the groot and just like stared at it because it landed at his feet and just stared at it and then looked at me and walked away <laughs> and then jackson saw the squirtle and immediately threw it back out into the crowd I was like, I hate you. He didn't even throw it towards me. He threw it just mm -hmm. randomly. So now someone has my squirtle that says Wang Gay on it. So that's great. But yeah. They're really goofy. I love I love them. I'm going to I'm gonna try so if you guys don't know, Mark is actually doing a solo tour uh, in October and yeah, November. I saw it yesterday to I wanna try and go see it. He's coming here. I'm going to all three Texas shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I do not care. I'm gonna be like, hello. He's going to be like, Robin, go away. <laughs> I was in Dallas. I'm going. Yeah. Like, I'm the. It was so funny because whenever I saw the dates, I didn't see San Antonio. My eyes immediately gravitated towards Dallas Houston because that's what I'm used to seeing, right? And so I was like, I'm going to both Texas shows. And then my friend was like, Don't you mean three? And I like was like, What? And I looked back and saw San Antonio and I was like, I'm going to all three. I'm going to all three. So. He gonna get annoyed with me. Well, once again, I'm Robin. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, if you guys want to give me a follow over on the YouTubes, because once again, I do a lot. I, 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 like, I like to say that I am a K-pop YouTuber. In all reality, I only do GOT7. <laughs> so... Um, I do a lot of videos. Um, if you guys also want to go more in depth about GOT7 and get like more into them, I actually have a video on my YouTube channel basically explaining their whole discography up until Encore. That's on my YouTube channel if you guys want to watch and if you guys want to get more into GOT7 if you're not already or if you want to know a little bit more. I went more in depth in that video than I did today, obviously, because I did a lot of research about my boys uh, <laughs> for that video. Um, I am also a Twitch streamer, 
Um, I do talk about K-pop on my Twitch. Um, not as often as I do on YouTube, obviously. Yeah, that's me. You can also follow me on Twitter at Robin L. Rush. Um, my usernames are all the same across all platforms um, to make it very easy for people to find me. Um, and thank you all for joining me on this beautiful journey of about talking about GOT7. It was a lot of fun. I was actually really worried about this because I thought no one would show up. <laughs> So thank y'all for joining. I was really nervous. I was texting Ashley like, no one's going to show up. She was like, Robin, shut up. Augustes are everywhere. I'm like, no, they're not. I've never seen one <laughs> except for you. Thank you guys so much for joining. Yes, no problem. Thanks for doing this. Of course. And thank you guys so much for joining. It's amazing. Um, and yeah.